It's been five months since the last Airsoft Top Series episode. That's pretty bad. Well, I guess this is a good enough opportunity than any other. So many builds have been submitted to the US Airsoft Facebook, Instagram, and through email for months now. So many snipers, M4s, high kappas, and stuff like this. But for this show, we return to submachine guns to show off just a bit of what the airsoft world has to offer. The last rendition of this topic was awesome. However, there's so much more to check out, so let's get into another top 5 Airsoft SMG builds. It was pretty hard to narrow this down to only 5 builds after over 100 were submitted, but here we go. From one of a kind builds, bullpup conversions, and so on, this is the Airsoft Top Series that begins at number 5, which is held by Carlos from the Philippines for this KWA NS2 Mac 11. Right away, we get an interesting sci-fi build that didn't take much to put together. The whole receiver extension, charging handle extension, and SPOS 12 lookalike folding stock are all made from PVC despite looking like they were all crafted from metal at first. However, inside, we only have an inner barrel mod to fit the now longer outer barrel. And that's it. Altogether, this simple build only took a week to make, but it still came out great as a commission for Carlos's hipster friend. I did get a lot of good looking Mac Ingram builds, but this one stood out the most to me and to the judges. So great work, Carlos. Next up in the fourth spot is a Kansas City resident named Andrew for this CQB battleship of an Echo 1 GAT. Andrew wanted a GAT since a fellow operator showed up at his local indoor field with one shortly after Echo 1 released them. He recently fell into ownership of one, but it was missing some interesting touches. Andrew needed more battery space, and he had some ideas to change the look of the GAT altogether. Externally, Andrew hooked up this build with a CQB stock, a 3D printed full length rail, a mini red dot, a PEC box for a bigger battery, of course, a slick mock suppressor, and some awesome vinyl decals that were created by Andrew's wife. Then on the inside, we have a 6.02mm inner barrel with Mad Bull blue bucking and a high speed motor. This all kept the build cost pretty low at only 200 bucks thanks to the stockpile of upgrades that were just lying around in Andrew's house. With the added stock, you have another point of contact to improve accuracy and more battery space is always great. Oh, and shout outs to all these people who helped Andrew put this idea into reality. Okay, so we all know that the ARP-9 by G&G really made an impact on the airsoft community. So many 9mm AR builds were turned in for this countdown, and I mean lots of them. We got other builds, like this DSG Gap by Trung, and other stuff, but one apocalyptic 9mm M4 build stood out. And it belongs to Chris from New Zealand's Palmerston North Airsoft Club which takes up the third spot for this countdown. Much like the Air P9, this gun began life as a G&G. This is what happens when you get real creative with a rental M4 that had a broken barrel. As you can clearly see, this conversion is comprised of external modifications like the custom machine magwell and outer barrel made from 32mm solid aluminum bar. The gas tube is also a solid aluminum 10mm rod. The tanker style muzzle brake, stainless steel wire stock based on a Mac 10 design, buffer tube made from solid aluminum, and dust cover are all handmade. Inside a standard 300mm inner barrel can be found with the short stroke piston with three teeth removed and we have a dual sector gear for a high rate of fire. Furthermore, the G36 rear sight, single underbarrel rail with a front grip that conceals a 7.4 LiPo battery just adds a little bit more flair. I give Chris big respect for making good use of Thompson magazines with this crazy build. After all, this was supposed to be his take of a modernized Tommy gun. A lot of Chris's builds are pretty crazy. I mean, really, this is some other world stuff. Like this build or not, we appreciate Chris's creativity. All right, so let's see something a little bit more conventional, something inspired by Ronan of the Green Mountain Rangers. It's coming from Michigan, thanks to Hunter. It's his G&G MP5 build. Holding a price tag of about $800, this MP5 looks awesome with a real key mod MP5 handguard from H&K Parts that had to be modified to fit. The battery that runs this gun is a special LiPo that fits inside of the top receiver above the gearbox, which cuts down on unrealistic parts standing out ruining any immersion. The Repro T1 and Repo PQ box on a 5-inch riser then completes the looks on the outside. 
Filling up the rest of the parts list, Hunter added in the popular Gate Titan, SHS 1301 gears, an SHS piston, ZCI cylinder with a Lonix piston head, a Lonix cylinder head, a Prometheus M120 spring, a ZCI high torque motor, and a ZCI 220mm inner barrel with a flat hopped GNG bucking backing it up. This would have made a great build for a Milson build countdown or even in an H&K theme show. But as an SMG alone, it has a great list of internals to go with the MP5's looks. I do like seeing MP5's built for serious gameplay, so really great build, Hunter. I really need to do another H&K Top 5 though, when I get the chance. But really great build once again. Hey everyone, Jarek4 here. You might know me from my own Airsoft channel, which I promise you I'm going to start posting to very soon, as in in the next few days soon, if not by the time this video already goes up. But for now, I am a guest on this video talking about one of the cooler projects I've ever seen when it comes to an Airsoft gun. I had two responses when I saw the pictures of this thing. The first one was sort of, is that a Chris Vector mix? Why? But my second response was, holy hell, that's badass. Now, I was wrong when I came to the assumption of a Chris Vector mix. It's actually based off a WE M1A1 Thompson. If you don't recognize what it's supposed to be, this is the Blishlock SMG from a game that was very recently discontinued called Dirty Bomb. Surprised I didn't recognize it, because I had a lot of fun in this game back in the day. As stated, the base gun is a WE M1A1, and it is still fully functional internally. One of the cooler things about this project is that it's just a body kit, meaning this is not a permanent thing. If you wanted a regular WE M1A1 with no modification needed, you could just turn it right back to that Thompson. It works with a homemade HPA adapter that replaces the original M1A1 magazine and accepts slightly modified Ares UMP magazines, where the inside of the magazine has been flipped 180 degrees. This obviously will give you more ammo and make for a more reliable gas blowback. This project was made by a cool guy over in Belgium by the name of Stein GBB, or uh, this name you can pop up on screen if you want to. I cannot pronounce this if I tried. Stein says he made this because he just got a 3D printer and WE was releasing a new Thompson, so this was one of the first ones on the market. He figured, well, why not make one of the more iconic weapons from a game that he's enjoyed since the first week of closed beta? And as someone that's really been in the video games for a long time, I damn respect that. It's always super cool to see a fictional weapon in-game turn into a real-life counterpart, something that you can physically hold, take pictures of, it's a rare sight to see, but when it happens, and when it's done well, it ends up just so badass. I mean, who else is going to be walking around with this on the field? This is quite literally the only one in the world. He says the cost was pretty respectable, mostly the time around 300 plus hours on test printing. 350 euros for the M1A1, around 250 euros for the parts. Some custom milled HPA unit, pins, filament, etc. All things considered, I think it turned out pretty damn well. I really never thought that I would have Jarek 4 on any of my videos. It's definitely a real pleasure to have him here to explain how awesome this build came out. The creativity, craftsmanship, imagination, and all together hard work this video game build took is stunning, and I love every little detail. This is definitely a build that some people will fight over when it comes to the top spot, but now it's time to introduce Pascal, because Sweden is taking gold for this all 3D printed conversion of the ASG Scorpion EVO 3 A1. I know a lot of ASG reps that are probably going to share these photos all around the world. Normally these countdowns pull in a lot of bullpup conversions, some done clean like this one, and some done not so neat around the corners. But Pascal really knocked it out of the park with this one. He created a new magazine release, a new adjustable stock, a two part body consisting of a cover for the pistol grip and trigger, and one that extends to the rail. He also made a complete front grip with trigger and built in front grip. Some of these pictures have an HBI style rail with some tweaks to fit the gun, like a 20mm rail on the bottom instead of the M lock. Lastly, some of these have an XM177 flash hider just because he loves that flash hider the most. All this took countless hours of tweaking, reprinting, fitting, but not that much when it came to expenditures since only $40 was spent over the course of 17 prototypes in 6 months. This may be the only Airsoft Bullpup Scorpion Evo in the world or Bevo as Pascal calls it. Thankfully Pascal set up this bullpup SMG in such a way that he can have the stock lengthened or add on even more body defining mods. Now only if this was a conversion package that you could just order offline because you would definitely have the most unique gun on the field. I have so many more builds to show off. I'm not talking about just SMGs either. I'm a bit torn between another LMG countdown or another shotgun countdown. Both would be awesome, but I'll leave it to you guys to decide in the comments down below. I'm really excited to get more of these episodes out there of the Airsoft Top Series, 
And if you'd want to submit your own special airsoft builds, then please go ahead and follow me on my Instagram or on Facebook so you can be the first to see when submission polls open. There will be links down below in the description so you can go follow me there. I'd like to thank you all for watching the return of the Airsoft Top Series and big shouts go to these past sexy commenters and to the first 500 people that spanked that like button hard. Every bit of support helps me out and I appreciate every bit of it from all of you guys. I will be sure to begin the next countdown soon, but until our next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck and I will be sure to see you all next time.